Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss regular expression validation tests in SQL Server. SQL Server does not have regular expressions per se, but it does have similar functionality built into the like operator. These work on text values much like the prior video on this playlist set. The upsides include flexibility and power. You can do a lot of different searches and it's easily configurable and separated from the code. The downsides are complexity. It's hard to read and debug and it's less performant. Think table scan. There are 14 examples in this rule set, and we're going to get started with is phone number right now. To get started, first open a browser and then set the URL to github.com slash data research labs, all one word. And then scroll down to SQL scripts here or here, click it. And then scroll down to where you see data validation scripts, click that. And then we're dealing with SQL Server, so scroll down until you see SQL Server, and we want to look at rule set number seven, regular expressions, so click that. And here we are on the <clears throat> page of regular expressions. And there's several of them, test 45 through 58. We're going to look at phone numbers, social security numbers, zip codes, etc. checking for white space, email address, URL, etc. So let's get started with test case number 45. And we're going to check to see if a text field is a phone number using the like operator. And what's happening here is we're saying when the phone number is not like one, uh, this pattern. And the pattern is a numeric digit, numeric digit, numeric digit, and then either a dash, a period, or a space to separate the area code, three digits, followed by three more digits, followed by a separator, delimiter, a minus sign, a period, or a space, whatever you happen to be using in that field, and then followed by four digits. If it is not that format, it'll pop a fail, otherwise it'll pop a pass. Next is test case 46, where we're going to look at whether or not the social security number is valid. So we're checking case when the social security number is not like three digits, a dash, two digits, a dash, and four digits. If it's not a typical social security number format, then trigger a fail. Moving along to is zip five. We're going to check the zip5 field, and if it's not exactly five digits, then fail. Now, I'm not talking through all of the inner query, and I'm not talking through the outer query. You can see the prior videos for that. I just want to move along and focus on the business logic meet, which is typically right in here in the inner query. So test case number 48, is it a zip5 or a zip9? In this case, we're going to check the field is zip5 or 9. We're going to use the same five-digit check we did up here, but we're also going to say, and the field is also not like five digits dash four digits, which would be a zip nine format. Moving along to test case 49, is it a zip nine? It's gonna be the same drill, it's just gonna have the second part here only. So it's saying that the uh, field zip nine must be five digits, a dash, and four digits. Moving along to test case 50, we only want text. So in this case, the magic here with the like operator is check the field last name. Well, it's going to scan every character looking for what's in here. So it's going to ignore the characters before, ignore the characters after, and focus one character at a time. And inside the brackets, it's saying this little caret here, which is the shift six, it's saying as long as the caret, or if the character is not lowercase or uppercase A to Z, and it's not a space, if it's none of those, then it's not alpha, trigger an error. And in this case, lowercase a to z is probably not going to do anything because the server's not collated. So really, for the lowercase to apply, I'd have to put collation in, but whatever. You'll see that lower in this video, later in this video. Test case 51, only numeric. We're going to check for the zip5 and check and see if any character in the string is not equal to zero through nine or a period. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or a period. If a character is not one of those, it'll trigger an error. Move along to test case 52. We don't want any leading or trailing spaces. So here we're saying when the last name is like a space and a bunch of characters, or the last name is like a bunch of characters ending in a space, then trigger a fail. Leading space, trailing space. Test case 53, no white spaces at all anywhere in the uh, string. So in this case, the job ID field, if the job ID field has a space anywhere inside the string, 
Characters before don't care. Characters after don't care. But if there's a space somewhere, that's a problem. It'll trigger the fail. Or the job ID has a carriage turn. Or the job ID has a line feed. Or the job ID has a tab. Or the job ID has a non-breaking space. If any of those situations occur, that's white space, and it'll trigger an error. Moving along to test case 54, we're only looking for lowercase. And here we are looking at the first name, taking the substring, starting from position three and taking two characters. And we're collating it by this string, and you can Google what those mean, but I believe CS is case sensitive, and I believe AS is alpha sort as opposed to numeric sort. So the collation is telling it, hey, take this string, take this first name string, and we're going to collate it so it's case sensitive, and then take the uh, two positions starting at position three, two characters starting at position three. And if those are not equal to the lower of the same thing, it's an error. So this is saying, hey, positions three and four should be lowercase in the first name. And if it's not, trigger an error. Test case 55. Only uppercase, same as above. We just basically swap out upper for lower. And we're looking at a different field, email, and yeah, we happen to be looking at the same positions. And the next test case is test case 56, which is title case, which is basically every word has to have the first letter capitalized. And there's a bunch of logic here you can go through, but the primary things that we're looking at is a field first name. We're collating it to be case sensitive and alpha sort, and then we're looking at it and saying, hey, if it doesn't begin with a alpha character uppercase, pop an error. If it does, and if it's got an uppercase followed by lowercase, and it passes all that, but we get down here and there is no spaces, well, then it's a one word first name, and so it'll just pass and move on. But if there's a second, third, fourth word in the first name, some names have that, then it will uh, check and say, hey, and this is the magic of the title case, hey, is there any part of the string where there's stuff before, followed by a space, line uh, word break, and then the first letter after the space is not an uppercase? And if there's any instance of that, trigger an error. And then this is similar. If there's a bunch of characters, don't care what it is, but if there's a space signifying a new word, and then there's a uppercase, which is good, we want that because we passed this, and then the next character is not lowercase, that's an error. Okay, moving along, test case 57. The email address, do a check for that. So we first check, there's what, nine rejection codes. Is the email address null? Well, say that it's null. Is the email address an empty string, a blank string? Well, say it's blank. Is the email address like uh, wildcard, wildcard, any of these characters, does the email address contain a, a double quote, parentheses, any of these characters? Then pop an error and say, hey, the email address contains bad characters. It also checks the email address has any bad characters in the company name. So it's gonna say, take the substring of the email address at the index of the at symbol, and then uh, the rest of the, the string, read it. And if that part to the right of the at symbol contains any of these characters inside the brackets, pop an error. Uh, next rejection code is saying that the email address should not start with any of those characters. So if the email address starts with a dash underscore plus, pop an error. And here it's saying it shouldn't end with those characters either. And here we're saying that an email address shouldn't have a bracket, either type of bracket open or close bracket inside of it. Email address shouldn't have multiple at signs. And an email address should not have leading underscores in any segment. So it should not start with the name with a leading underscore. After the at symbol for the company name, it shouldn't start with a leading underscore. And then caught another bug. It's at, and that's supposed to be a period. So I corrected that. So no underscores at the name part, the company part, or the domain.com.net, whatever part. And if it passes all those checks, then it gets a P for pass. And you can Google and come up with additional ways to tighten your email check, but that's a crack at it here. Uh, next up, test case 58, last one in the set, is URL. 
So we're going to take the URL field, and if it's not like HTTP colon slash slash, and it's not like HTTPS colon slash slash, then it's going to pop an error and say it's missing either of those two leading uh, uh, parts of the URL. The second rejection code is when the URL is not like, it's not alphanumeric uh, with a dot and then alphanumeric with a slash, et cetera. So it's just looking for a standard format. You should have We've checked the HTTPS colon slash slash. Then we're checking and saying, hey, there's got to be some alphanumeric stuff. There has to be a dot. There has to be some more alphanumeric stuff, etc." And as with email, you can tighten this yourself and, and add additional checks into it. To download the SQL scripts of this video, open up a browser and go to HTTPS colon github.com slash data research labs, all one word. Hit enter. On here, you'll find a SQL scripts link somewhere. It happens to be here. It happens to be here. You can search for it on the page. Anyway, find it, click it, and just scroll down on the page. And you'll see the information on the page. Skip data dictionary, data validation scripts. That's what you want. Click that. Scroll down. You can read the details on that, how to use it, what it is, notes. And then here we go. So SQL Server, there's all the different scripts. MySQL, I don't have the scripts written yet. I got to do that. Oracle, I have the scripts and the videos done. So find the link you want. Let's say diff checks, click it. Scroll down. And these ones are so big, the SQL snippets, that I had to roll them up and co or collapse them. Uh, anyway, let's expand that. There's the details. And here's the big long SQL script that diffs the schema, the column names, table names, data types, etc. So I have an expected set, and then you compare it. Anyway, the uh, little clipboard icon here is what you would click to copy all of this properly formatted and ready to go. And it's in the clipboard, so why don't I pop open a brand new notepad and paste what's in the clipboard. There we go. There's all the SQL from the script ready to go. You can use it in your SQL editor. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.